All right, let's look at our notes from Chapter 5. Um, yeah, this is kind of, I already mentioned some of this. Uh, and, you know, so in Note 1, they're just pointing out that, you know, if, if f of x is in the form of uh, the solution, you know, so something like this where I've got 1 times pi x and then they have uh, 1 half sine of 3 pi x. Uh, they're saying, hey, the, the solution is easy. Okay, the solution is simply that u of x and t is equal to e to the minus uh, pi um, alpha squared t. So there's the 1 pi um, and then sine of pi x. And then plus uh, one half, so our coefficient there, and then e to the minus, and this is uh, three, so three pi alpha squared t uh, sine of three pi x. So that's our solution if this is phi of x here. Okay, it is. It is that simple. Um, and uh, and everything else, you know, uh, a sub 2 would equal 0, and a sub 4 would equal, a sub 5 would equal, and, and so forth, would all be zeros. Okay, but a sub 1 and a sub 3, uh, because these weren't 0, um, you know, we would have our, our 1 and 1 half on those constants. So... You know, a sub 1 was equal to 1, a sub 3 was equal to a half. Okay, so that's what they're talking about in note 1. Uh, note 2, um, uh, they're um, uh, they're just expanding the um, the initial temperature is a simple sum of, sum of functions, they're saying, and um, these add together. You know, I, so I, it's, it's not that simple, but yes, they're, they're just, you know, for instance, in example two, you know, they're doing it with sine functions, but remember um, Taylor series and things like that. So, you know, in a Taylor series, you got, uh, you could say f of x equals, um, uh, you know, f at some x0. Okay, so that's just a constant. Call it a0, right? Uh, plus f prime at x0 uh, times x minus uh, x0, like that. Oh, well, okay, call this um, instead of... You know, this a0, call this one a1, and, and so forth, right? Plus, and we could have a2 uh, x minus x0 squared. Uh, normally, we divide by 2, but I stuck that in for the a2. And so you see, you know, Taylor series says, um, yeah, I can, I can um, write any function I want. And, right, we've done this with sine functions. Any sign, you know, I can write a sine function as an infinite sum of uh, polynomials. Okay, so um, why not write, uh, you know, uh, um, some other function like a, a polynomial as an infinite sum of sine functions? Oh, why not? Uh, and that's exactly what's happening is that uh, these are called Taylor series here. Okay, and what we're using uh, Fourier series. Okay, and it's just that we're going to say f of x is some you know, a1 
sine uh, pi x plus a2 sine uh, 2 pi x and so forth. So that's the difference is, you know, here we used, you know, uh, a constant function, then a, and we, you can toss in a constant here. You can have an a0 plus all this. You can definitely do that. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, we have a linear function and then a quadratic, then we have a cubic. Well, here we have a sine pi, sine 2 pi, sine 3 pi x, and so forth. Okay, so Taylor series you learn about in calculus. Uh, we don't, uh, you know, tend to see much about Fourier series in calculus courses, um, but they're really the same idea. Um, and... Uh, you know, in the end, it works the same way as I can take a function and I can write it as long as it's a nice enough function, I can write it as an infinite series of sine functions instead of um, uh, polynomials. Okay, so that's what three is talking about. And then, or sorry, two is talking about. And then three is just pointing out that, you know, when you do this, so u of x t, we get this a1 and then e to the minus uh, pi alpha squared t uh, sine uh, pi x and then plus a2. Um, but notice what happens here is that um, we get the minus uh, 2 pi alpha like that, squared t sine 2 pi x. Okay, and then plus and all these other. But notice, um, by the time you square this, um, really what you have here is is this, this one, um, right? Uh, forget about the constants for a minute. You have e to the minus 4, times uh, pi alpha squared t and then um, sine of the 2 pi x. So here's e to the negative 4. Well, you know, if you compare e to the negative 4 to e to the negative 1, like we have up here, um, you know, you can try plotting that, e to the negative 4x, just do it that way, versus uh, e to the negative x. Uh, this is going to basically look like zero. And so what they're talking about in 3 is initially, and they say for quite some time, Okay, and for some time, uh, the solution will look like um, uh, u of x and t equal whatever a1 is, e to the minus um, pi alpha squared t sine of pi x. And so we'll have to, we'll check that out with our numerical stuff. But, uh, but they're saying that, you know, typically uh, the solution's going to um, look a lot like this for uh, quite a while. And so we'll check that out. But those are the notes.